when did you start recording? That makes absolutely no sense. Nonetheless. if I record this completely for once. I actually get it to work at the end of it. Oh, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Huh. Okay, hey guys, it's the professor. I'm going to do a quick recap on the Microsoft E3 press conference that was yesterday, and I'm also going to cover the Sony one and the Nintendo one. Now, I haven't gotten a chance to watch the Nintendo conference yet, but I've, I'll be doing that here shortly and as soon as I can, actually. Okay, um, but to start off, Microsoft, they went over Modern Warfare 3, and they went over Tomb Raider. And these really aren't any real points or anything that Microsoft should be proud of for the sole fact that they're not exclusive. They're cross-system they're cross -system content. It's nothing that they should really be bragging about. Okay, yeah, you're getting it, so is PlayStation 3. Leave that to the respective companies to brag about and not Microsoft to brag about. Okay, so... Xbox fanboys, don't be bragging about you have Tomb Raider and Modern Warfare because they showed it at E3 because it's a cross-platform game. Both of them are. Um, but they did mention that Tiger Woods, Madden 2012, and FIFA 2012 are going to have Connect capabilities. Now, I can see Tiger Woods I can see Tiger Woods working well. I can see playing golf with a Connect and actually having quite a bit of fun with that. But as for Madden 2012 and FIFA... Um, I'm pretty sure that football and soccer are not meant to be, you know, rail shooters. Because that's all the Kinect can really do is rail shooters. Everything on there is a rail shooter. Don't believe me? We'll just get a little bit farther into what the, the stuff that they announced, and especially their exclusives. Um, Mass Effect 3. Yeah, they mentioned it, which, yet once again, not another exclusive. It's cross-platform. Um, Mass Effect 3... They mentioned you have conversation control, or make your conversation choices in Mass Effect, you can select those by actually saying them, such as you want to tell someone that, shut up, then you would be like, shut up, and then you'd have the character on screen go, shut up. But yeah, that you it's that sort of thing. And you can also give voice commands to your teammates and your party during battle. Now... They were bragging about this. They were like, oh, this is huge. This is a huge thing. But here's the thing. Here is one little really important thing you need to remember. I was doing voice commands on video games back on the PlayStation 2. I was also doing them on the N64. Hey, You Pikachu was one of those games. Now, it wasn't, it's not the best example because that's kind of broken, but it was a good tech demo and a test for the whole voice commands of video games. And on PlayStation 2, you had Lifeline. Which, depending on the microphone and the headset you had, it could be a very good game, and it worked quite well. I enjoyed it thoroughly myself. Yeah, Lifeline was nothing but voice commands. Everything you did was voice command. So this isn't something new. This isn't something fanboys of the 360 should be going, Oh, oh, oh voice controls, voice activation in the game. No, it's nothing new. And also, why do we need to connect for this? They can, You can use a regular headphone... And you can get the same effect out of it. There's no reason for this to be a connect item. And for this to be something that, oh, look what the connect is doing. But you can just use a regular headset for that. Um, Future Soldier, impressive teaser. I'll give it that. The teaser was quite impressive and very enjoyable to watch. But as for the gunsmithing, open gun. Optimize, optimize, optimize. No, that's not impressive. And it did show that, oh, okay, so we can do actual shooting a gun by doing this to fire a weapon but that's really not a, that's nothing because that was at a firing range that was at a shooting range in game that wasn't actual game play that wasn't going through a stage and killing things by flicking your hand or or however he had his hands you know but it, yeah it's that wasn't actual gameplay that was at a firing range in a shooting range that's nothing to be happy about because they haven't proved that oh yeah we can fully integrate this into a first person shooter or a third person shooter because that's all the 360 has for the most part is first person and third person shooters plus sports games that's all you've really got 
you've got a few here and there that aren't, but for the most part, that's what you got, and that's what the Connect doesn't do. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. <laughs> Their announcement that YouTube is coming to the 360. Here's, here's the thing. Here's the thing. I've got a PlayStation 3, and the second I turn on my PS3, guess what? I can watch YouTube. I can upload videos to YouTube. I could fully utilize YouTube. Guess what I can do in my Nintendo Wii? YouTube. And guess what? They've been doing them since they were released. So the whole YouTube thing is Microsoft playing catch up. Trying to catch up to the rest of the industry. Um, oh, the Uf UFC integration into the Kinect. All it really is is betting made easier with Kinect. That's all it is. It's a betting system for UFC. How does this um, increase our gaming experience? How does this improve our experience with the system? It doesn't. It's a gimmick to make you watch more UFC and to use your, and to do, I guess it's betting Microsoft or Xbox Live points or whatever that is. But really, let's go ahead and get into the exclusive, which honestly is the meat of any press conference at E3, are the exclusive, exclusive titles and content that's coming out. Now, as for content and video games, map packs. Yeah, that's about it, map packs. That's what Microsoft is bragging about. They're getting map packs for exclusive content on games. Whoopity-doo. You're getting map packs. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and just look at the actual games, shall we? First up, there was Gears of War 3, which is a sequel. That's This is your first exclusive. It's a sequel to a game that I honestly feel is overrated. It's another third-person shooter, completely and totally uninspired. Space Marines fighting aliens. Hello, Halo. Hello, Doom. Um, oh yes, and bringing out Ice T for publicity. Now I, I understand all well and good that Ice T does a voice in the game of Gears of War, but here's the thing: he also endorsed humanized kangaroos and Tank Girl. We know how that well went, or how well that went, didn't we? And I love the whole thing that if you watch the EA conference, they actually took a shot at Microsoft for having Ice T show up for publicity. <laughs> but then again, we can't really hold um, Microsoft are on a different level from, say, Sony or EA. So for the whole fact that they actually had publicity sh or publicity people and celebrities show up for their conference as well, so they kind of sold out on that part as well. So I'll take shots at each of them for that too. Don't worry. Um, let's see, Rise. It's a rail shooter of the 300 or God of War. That's all it is. It's a rail shooter. Row shooter number one for the Connect. We'll keep a count of that. Let's see. Oh, the Halo remake. New graphics, and that's about it. They're going to use the Halo Reach system for the online multiplayer. And that's it. It's new graphics for the original game. Nothing impressive. Not enough to make me buy a 360 at least. Let's see. Forza 4. Forza Motorsports 4, I can see working and being a very beautiful game with the Connect Because I can see the Connect just giving you that immersion that you're looking for in these games and what they're trying to do with Connect and with this and doing the whole simulated car driving. That looked good. So to that one I have to say Microsoft, good job. You had a shining moment in your press conference and that was Forza Motorsports 4. But then we moved to Fable, The Journey. Guess what? Rail Shooter number 2. Why? Because it's a Connect game. Now here's the thing. Fable has always been an adventure RPG. It's one of the few reasons I wished I did have a 360 is to play Fable. But believe me, Fable the Journey is not one of those. Because I don't want to play a rail shooter on that. I'm sorry, Fable is not meant to be a rail shooter. That's not the right path to go with Fable. I know you're trying to get up cells on the Kinect, but seriously, turning a good game like Fable into a rail shooter, that's just low, honestly. Okay, Minecraft. Woohoo! Let's see, Disneyland Adventures. Oh, we can go flying around with Peter Pan and hang out with Mickey on our Xbox Connect. Why don't you just get up and go to actual Disneyland? I think that would actually be a lot more fun, because then you could actually at least ride a roller coaster or something. Um, let's see, Star Wars. Oh, this was a good one, Star Wars. That was what they tried to sell the Connect with last year. Because the whole thing with the Connect at the previous E3 was, everyone's like, oh, geez, this is just a family gimmicky kids thing so they're like no no we have a star wars game on the connect now we're just not gonna we'll give you about five seconds of gameplay right now but wait till next year you'll see more 
So, of course, when they got to Star Wars, everyone was like, yeah, whoa, bring on the demo. And then they played the demo, and the second the demo was done, dead silence. That answers every question about how the Star Wars demo went for Microsoft. Dead silence. Then they talked about Sesame Street, Once Upon a Monster. It's a kid's game. And I will give it this. At least the kid who was actually playing this one seemed like he was having fun. Maybe because he was the appropriate age. Unlike the people they had playing Disneyland Adventures, which were, I hate to tell you, Microsoft, hire better actors next time. Definitely. You need to hire some better actors and better writers for their scripts. Um, let's see. I'm going to go in. Yeah. Connect Sports. Ho oh, ho. Yeah. A new version of that. They're adding football and I believe it was. Well, uh, it was golf. Football and golf. Now, here's the thing. These claim that the Connect is one to one, the control is one to one. That's what they claim. Thing is, when they say they were doing the football thing, they got to be like, hike. Connect waited, waited, he finally got the ball. It would take like two seconds for the game to respond. That is not one-to-one -one controls. That is lag. Horrible, horrible lag. So Microsoft, I hate to tell you, you kind of put your foot in your mouth with that one, showing off the lag of the new Connect Sports. Really not a good game show there. Then let's see, oh, Dance Central 2. It's a sequel to the first Dance Central, and yet they made us watch a demo. Why? We know what Dance Central is. You stand up there and you look like an idiot in front of everyone. The only good thing is, it's a two-player game now, so you can have two people look like idiots. Um, and also, the girl at the end of it coming around and saying, We'll see you at E3! Really? We'll see you at E3? That's what you had to say at the end of it? Hey, um, hun, just to let you know, you were standing on stage in the middle of E3. You were already at E3. You're not going to see them at E3. You should have just been like, we're seeing you now. But no, we're, we'll see you at E3. Yeah, that um, shows a little bit of the intelligence level of the people Microsoft hired to come demo their games for them. And then they ended it off with Halo 4. Yeah, Halo 4. They're kicking that dead horse. Master Chief, I'm sorry, dude. I enjoyed the first Halo and the second Halo. I enjoyed those. The third Halo, <laughs> I didn't care for. Really didn't. Halo Reach... I could have cared less. ODST, Halo Wars, I honestly think they're all useless games that, for the most part, Microsoft's saying, eh, they'll pay for it. They'll buy it. So let's just keep pushing them out. The fanboys will keep buying it and keep spending their money on it, and that's about all it is. So, and once again, guess what? Fanboys will buy it. Because people are only going, oh, Halo 4, oh my gosh, greatest game ever made. No, most overrated game ever made, if you ask me. That will be number one on the overrated games list. It's Halo. But yeah, it's just another cash cow. That's all it is. Welcome to Sony or Microsoft's cash cow. Sega has Sonic. Nintendo has Mario. Sony, they're starting to have the sack boy from Little Big Planet. But Microsoft has Master Chief. The only difference is Nintendo's Mario and Little Big Planet, those can be fun games still. Yeah. Little Big Planet has been good every time they've made them. I've enjoyed every last one of them. That and Mario Galaxy, anybody? Great game. Now, to close this off, I wanted to talk about one last thing, which is quite possibly the most pointless item that they showed us at E3. And this is open to everyone out. You can use it. If you have an Xbox Live account, you can use it now. The Connect Fun Labs, which are pointless and stupid. All you can do is say, I can stand in front of my Connect. Oh, oh my, my avatar has the same facial hair and the same hair I do. And, no, oh, it's wearing the same Disciple shirt I'm wearing. Because, you know, avatars are so important to the gaming industry. They really uplift your gaming experience to have an avatar on your Xbox Live dashboard and on your Xbox dashboard. No, and how about this? The 3DS, that was announced last year at the last E3 that the 3DS already did that. So, if you really want to look at it, I would say Microsoft got their idea from Nintendo. Because, yeah, the 3DS will take a picture of you and make a me. That's what it does. Let's see, finger tracking. Are you tracking it? That's their finger tracking. Never mind, it's not this. Or this. It's this. 
their finger tracking system that they showed during FunLab, dumbed down version of Photoshop. That's all it is. And don't give me the, oh, we can rotate it in 360 degrees. I can do that in Photoshop CS4. <laughs> and then also the last one, their object, whatever it was called, where you can take some random object and put it into your game. Say so you want, look, here's one of my daughter's bottles. I can turn this into a game character on the Xbox 360 by scanning one side, scan the other side, and then on my screen, my daughter's bottle will dance. Impressive. I've always wanted to make a Pikachu plushie dance on my 360. Then what is the point of that? What are you able to do? Put it into Gears of War? Are we going to have Gears of War where a baby bottle is knocking off the aliens? Are they going to save the world from the invasion of the aliens in Gears of War 3? Is the baby bottle going to be carrying around a chainsaw machine gun? Which can only take a series so far before even that gets old. But yeah, nonetheless, Microsoft, dude, guys, <laughs> two years in a row, you have flopped. And this is, the, this is the worst thing by far. Let's just count real quick. How many items on your list were not Kinect items? Let's see, Modern Warfare, Tomb Raider, but those aren't exclusives anyway. Let's see, Mass Effect 3, you focused on Connect, so that's not one. So, so far we got two. Future Soldier, no. YouTube, that's not a game, so we're not counting it. UFC, don't count it. Gears of War 3, okay, three items they didn't focus on Connect. Let's see, Rise, the Halo remake, four items. Forza, Fable, Minecraft, Disneyland Adventure, Star Wars, um, Sesame Street, Fun Labs, Connect Sports, Dance Central, and Halo. Five items that were not connect related five out of their whole thing 85 percent of their presentation was connect or connect related so if you watched your the e3 conference from xbox and microsoft here's what you should have left with this should have been the thought in your mind this is what microsoft was telling you if you don't have the connect we don't care about you anymore go buy the connect before we're going to support you anymore yeah you're getting gears of war 3 that's just so you don't leave us but for the most, we're just going to focus on Connect from here on out because that is the future. This is it. Everything's Connect. We're connecting the world with Connect. And if you don't get the Connect, we're not supporting you anymore. That's what it was. They were saying, if you don't have the Connect, we don't want your money. We don't care about you anymore. Forget our core customer, which are quote unquote hardcore gamers. And just real quick, a hardcore gamer is not a person who sits back and plays first person shooters and buys the newest shooter when it comes out. That's not a hardcore gamer. I'm sorry. 360, you're not the hardcore machine. You're not. The Wii is more of a hardcore machine. Why? Because it has multiple genres of video games. That's hardcore. Someone who plays multiple genres. I play every genre except for mostly sports. That's about the only one I don't play are sports games. But nonetheless, I'm, I'm digressing here. Nonetheless, that was my thoughts on Microsoft's E3 press conference. They failed horribly. It was miserable. It was pathetic. Um, so yeah, I'll be going over Sony next. And sadly, I wasn't nearly as impressed as I hoped I would be. <laughs> yeah, they kind of let me down too. But for the most part, Professor, signing off. I'll see you guys later with my recap of the Sony press conference from E3.